Welcome everyone to the Slimline Mega Make and Take by Scrapbook Expo. This is Stamp On It class, and I hope you're going to enjoy this. Here's what the card is, is going to look something like. Yours is gonna be different. No two cards do I even make alike. So if you'll notice on one of these, I mean, I blend it here, but you can also just color in, okay, with your markers. All right, we're gonna get started with the kit. So this is your kit. In this kit, you're gonna have a coupon and a sheet of instructions. Sorry about all the crinkling. You are going to get an artful stamp that's a vertical thank you. You're going to get two rolls of double stick tape. One is 3 8 inch and one is 1 8 inch. This is important for our glitter and blending technique. You're going to get a sheet of dragonfly stickers. We're only going to be using a few, so you will have a lot left on here to do other projects. We pre-printed a thank you for people who don't own stamp pads but still want to do this project. You can, you know, still participate. We also enclose spoons, a spoon, sorry. I was already ready to sell, tell you about how we sell them. We sell them in packages of six. And it is nice, <clears throat> excuse me, it is nice to have more than one spoon, but you can work with this just fine. You will have three packages of glitter. One is Summer Sky, one is Mermaid, and one is Heather. You will have an anti-static brush. You will have a slimline card base. And if you look at this, thank you, it fits on here as a layer. Okay, and you will have a matching envelope. And when I say matching, I mean the colors match. The whites are the same white. Then you will have three coffee filters. And you have this extra piece of cardstock, which you can do with it as you want. It can be your table paper, or you can use it for another project. All right, so let's get started. So what I'm gonna want you to get out is your stamped image. Now I'm first gonna show you how to stamp. For people who have <clears throat> never stamped, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm gonna set that one aside. And I know I have one already, I'm just gonna stamp right beside it. Or maybe I'll stamp on the back side. That's what I always tell all my people is that you can always your mistakes, there's always a second side. So if you make a mistake, you can do that. So then you're gonna need a, some hard surface, um, whether it be um, a plate from one of your uh, embossing machines or acrylic block, something that this can cling to. This is a cling stamp. It is on cling rubber. This is pink rubber with a cling foam backing. You peel off the backing and then it just automatically sticks. Doesn't fall off. All right, so I like, when I'm inking stamps, I like to ink bringing the ink pad down, not taking it and going like this, because chances are you're gonna miss something. And so I do it like this, and I just lightly tap, especially if you're using a brand new ink pad or a uh, newly refurbished or inked up pad, you want to not press too hard. Now, if you're wanting to create more cards like these, then you're going to want to know that you want to stamp near the left edge of the card bait, of the card layer. Then you just press down and lift up. Do not rock it because <clears throat> if you accidentally get ink on the edge of the rubber, it will transfer onto the paper. So I'm gonna show you another way for people who don't own stamp pads. You want to use 
a water-based marker, okay? So here is a black Tombow marker. Now, you're going to use this if you don't have a stamp pad. And then you just color, it's like coloring in the words. And yes, I'm getting it on the rubber, but it should not transfer because the word's set up high enough. Now, if you feel that it's taken a long time for this to get inked up and you think, oh no, the beginning part is dry, all you have to do is take a huff of your breath and it will re-moisten this ink. So I'm gonna do it away from the camera cause you're not gonna see my face, but <sighs> you heard me blow on it kinda with my hot air. And then I'm going to just press it down and pick it up, okay? So those are the two ways to ink your stamp. Let's get that out. Now we're going to bring back our layer piece that has the thank you on it. And we're going to, I like to turn it sideways. That's up to you, but I turn it sideways. You're then going to take your two different thicknesses of double stick tape. And you're going to start with the wider, the 3 8 inch. And what I do is I stretch out a lot and I put my fingers here to hold this in place. And then I come away from the edge and I kind of look to see that both sides look about the same. And then I press that down and I tear it off. Now, yes, this is going to attach to the, to the paper and tear, but it's no big deal. Then you're gonna take a pair of scissors and you're gonna trim off the excess. And then I'm going to burnish this down again. Make sure that's on really well. Then what I do is I take a pokey tool. We sell these on our website and they are great. I call them deadly weapons because these are very sharp. You'll like them. Then I'm going to remove the backing off of this. Do not throw this away. Leave it laying right there. Then you're going to take your 1 8 inch tape. Got to make sure I'm into your view. You're going to take your 1 inch, 1 8 inch tape and you're gonna find where it starts. There it is. And again, I go way more than I need. And I start here and I look, and then I look down here and let me tell you, you're not gonna get it perfectly in the middle. It's just not gonna happen. If it's way off, you know, you could pull it off and start again. But as my one friend always has told me, Perfection is only found in heaven. This is a homemade card. Okay, so now we're going to cut off this excess with our scissors. All right, so now what you need to do is you need to bring in your three coffee filters and your three bags of glitter. And what I'm going to want you to do is to go ahead and dump a good amount in each one of the coffee filters. Just shake a bunch in there. You could put it all in there if you wanted. Yeah, I think I want a bigger clump there. I don't want to have to work that hard. So this is the mermaid. This is the heather. Sorry, it's gonna get a little hard to be in view. So again, put in a good clump. I'm gonna move this off a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring this one in and we're going to put in the summer sky.
Okay, so now you're going to need your spoon. And as I said, we do sell these on our website in packages of six. All right, so we have our glitters. Now bring back in your sticky, you know, you have portion of this exposed. The sticky stuff is exposed. And what I'm going to teach you is how to blend glitter. Okay, so what you're going to do is you take the spoon and it kind of goes into the palm of your hand. And then you, you know, kind of hold it a little bit like a pencil because you have your thumb around it and this so that it doesn't do one of these things. Okay, and then that's what this finger helps too. And then it's going to be a tapping motion like this that is going to create this little cascading glitter coming down. So as you see, I'm going to scoop up some mermaid. And you'll see, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm going to kind of separate. I'm about four to five inches away from my card that has the tape exposed. Then I'm going to do this light tapping motion. If you tap too hard, a whole bunch is going to come out and you won't have a blended glitter. All right, so then let's use a spoon to tap it off. You can use your anti-static brush. Take that out of its package. And then I'm just going to get rid of that little bit. I'm not going to brush anything else because you don't want to make the um, tape not sticky anymore. You do want to clean off your spoon, though. So let's bring this back in. You do want to clean your spoon off with your anti-static brush. Okay. Now we're going to go in with the Heather. So I scooped some up, put a little bit out because I had quite a bit on there. Now, again, I'm holding it up. And I'm going to do that tapping motion. And then I just move it along as I see it coming down. I just move it along. You know, I move my hand that's holding on to the cardstock. Then I do a quick tap. Okay. Now, what you may not understand is that this is ultra fine glitter. And there are, you know, because there's just such microscopic glitter. You'll think, well, that's pretty much all covered. Well, in between everything is a lot of spaces that glitter can still attach itself. So then I take this one and I don't necessarily, because um, this is the last color, I don't necessarily shake this one, but you're more than welcome to shake it. I just put this on. That way then it goes in any crevice that doesn't already have glitter on it. Then you're going to take your anti-static brush and you're going to clean off your spoon. Now you're not done with your glitter, but let's pull it aside because then you're going to take your anti-static brush and you'll see that the tape that we have the backing on is, you know, a lot of glitter has attached to that. So what you're going to do is either um, buy a, a, have an empty container and I call it my sludge pot, which is a combination of all different kinds of glitter, which can look nice on backgrounds and things like that. So if you want to save it, do that. But, you know, I'm just brushing off the excess glitter. Any glitter that is meant to stay is going to stay on there. And I myself, I'm going to bring in my Really nice anti-static brush to get that off the table. All right, so now what we have to do is what I call bring the glitter to life or burnish it into the tape. So with your finger, you're going to rub in a back and forth motion, not super hard, but not very light. And you'll see, see the how this looks really sparkly and this one isn't. It's like you're bringing it to life. That's what I call it. It may not show on this video, but when you're doing this, you are going to notice the difference. Then again, you're going to bring your anti-static brush in because any glitter that wasn't meant to stick came off. And that's all normal. You can either use your hand to wipe this away. All right. So now we have this. We're going to take a pokey tool or just use your finger. 
and we're going to remove the center backing tape. All right. And the color that I have chosen to put in the middle of this is the heather. Okay. So take your spoon, which is clear. Oh, there it is. You know, when you set something down that's clear, you can't find it. So you take your spoon and now you're just going to cover this with the glitter. You can let it run on down, pick up some more. Make sure you get enough in there that there isn't any tape showing anymore. You see, there's no more tape exposed. Then you can take your anti-static brush and clean off your spoon. Now what you can do is you can return the glitter back into the containers. So this is how I do it. I fold it like a, I call this like a hot dog. And I'm holding it in my hand like this. And that creates like a funnel. Then I squeeze the bag and I just put in the leftover. And your coffee filter is usually pretty clean. If not, I just take it off to the side and tap it with my hand, you know, slap at it with my hand like that to get the rest off. That way then when you use it again, you won't contaminate anything. So let's return this. You just wanna corral everything up, get your little hot dog shape, and pour in the glitter. And as you can see, we did not use that much glitter. That's the wonder, uh, wonderful thing about ultra fine. See, I've got a bit more in here, but again, I'm going to slap it to get it clean. Okay. Then I'll clean off my table after that. Okay. This is the summer sky. I'm going to return. Get everything all kind of together. You do a little tapping motion to make sure everything's out. Close up the glitter. And your glitter bags will be labeled so you will know what each one is called if you want to get any more. All right, so the one thing that we haven't done since we put this glitter on was to burnish down and bring to life this heather color in the middle. So again, look at, look at the change. Look at the change. This is beautiful. That's the one thing I love about these glitters. They are so gorgeous. And you're gonna take your anti-static brush and brush away all the excess, whatever wasn't supposed to be here, won't be here. So, I'm going to take my big one and get this off of here. How do you like the smiley face the boss put on there? That's supposed to let me know I'm in center view. All right, so now we can take our sheet of stickers. That's the next thing we're going to do. So bring in your sheet of stickers and I'm going to show you this one, and I'm going to show you this one. You'll see that I have one of the semi-large ones, which is this one right here, down here. Then there is a, a medium size, well, it's right there, a medium size that I put there, and then over here, there's some little ones, and that's what I put there. Now on this one, you can see the difference. I put the big one, the medium, and the little, where here I put the big, the medium, and the little. So it's up to you how you would like to have your stickers on your layer. So we're going to take a pokey tool, or you can use your fingers, and I am going to get the larger 
one and it just slowly pull it off. Then what I do is with stickers, I like to lick my finger and then the sticker won't stick to my finger, okay? It doesn't harm the sticker, it will still stick. Then sometimes what I like to do is press it on my pokey tool. This way then I have all the ability to guide this however I want, okay? Then I just roll the stick and it comes off, all right? So there is one placed. Now we're gonna go to this medium sized one. We're gonna slowly pull that one off. If you get any of the, what I call chads left, um, you can take them out after you put them down or before, it's all up to you. So now because this one's going this way, I wanna put this one this way. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna get one of the little ones. Yeah, come on, there we go. And I'm going to place that up here. Okay, so now we have that all put together. So you can take your sticker sheet and put it aside. Now what you want to do is to get your colors of markers, they have to be water-based markers. They cannot be permanent because they will not blend. And then I have a blender pen, a Tombow blender pen. And this is what they look like when they're brand new. But don't worry, as you use it, it's going to get tinted by all the colors that you use. And I'm gonna show you that every time that you take out your blender pen once you've used it, consider it's dirty. And you see that I'm not going like this. That will break down the tip is I just roll it along and there's no color. So it doesn't matter that that is pink. Nothing is going to come on to my card. And I don't sit here a long time with anything uncovered, whether it's a marker or a blender. I do not leave it uncovered. Now, what you're going to want is the ability to blend your colors. So I'm going to have this to the side so that I can clean off my marker. So you do want to be able to clean off your blender pen, not your marker, your blender pen, because sometimes you will have picked up too much and you want it lighter. So then I just brush it on here to remove some color and I'll kind of show you as we go along. We're going to use this. This is a non-porous surface. This is one of our pieces of glitter film or scrap pieces. You could also use an acrylic block. You could use an acrylic block. And then what I would do is with an acrylic block, I scribble there. Now you notice I'm using the side of the marker, not the tip. I'm using the side of the marker. So that's what you do if you're using an acrylic block. We're gonna use this. And so again, I'm just going to scribble some color on And you'll always want to test because you would be surprised. When you look at this, you go, how did that become this? When you're blending, you're lightening the shade. And so you want to test to see if that is going to be the light color that you wanted. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this and I just touch it on here. And I go, well, that's, that's nice. So you don't want to keep going into all this heavy stuff because that's where the saturated ink is. So we're gonna start here on the bigger, let me move the markers out of the way. Okay, I think I'm right here in the middle now. Let's turn this so I can just see myself going, oh, right into the green. All right, so I'm gonna get some, paint, some fuchsia on here. And what I do is I think about shading and I go, okay, it's, dark here towards the center, so I make sure that's there. Then I clean off a little bit and I carry the rest out, okay? And then if I go, well, I want it a little bit darker there, I just add a little bit more, all right? So I'm picking up some more and I'm doing this and then you can do like a little brushing stroke if you can see that I'm kind of doing that with a little flick. Okay, 
So let's see, what else do I want to have? Pink. Um, maybe I'll do this one. And then I'll come over here on this side. When you know you have it pretty light, you can color in the rest and then just go back and darken the inside part. See, like maybe I want to add some more dark here because it dries a little bit lighter as you're going, okay? So now I got to figure out what else would I like to have pink? Let's see, I think I'm going to do this right here. So I'm bringing in a darker here and then maybe rubbing a little bit away because it's a small area. Now remember, this is cardstock. It dries quickly. You can't do a whole bunch of spaces all at once. You have to just work little bits at a time because once it dries and makes a mark, that's there. There's, there's no getting around it, okay? So let's go over here. I did that one, now I'm going to do this one. And I'm bringing the dark in, taking a little bit off and coloring the rest. And maybe I want to get into this because this is usually very light right here. And I'm like, well, that was a little too light. All right, now I want a little bit of dark. So I went into a spot that looks darker. There we go. And I do like a, a dot dot thing sometimes when I feel like there's a line. So you just take your tip and you just kind of go like this to kind of blend the two, the lighter and the darker. All right, so now let's do, let's do this one right here. So I'm just doing this and then I bring this in. Now I want to bring a little bit darker here. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm a little ways away from this, so I'm having trouble seeing. But I want you all to see how I do this. Now, you are it's going to take some time, but you're going to get this down. I am getting better and better as the, year, <laughs> as the time goes by. I am getting much better at this blending. And I am not an artist. All right, what else do we want pink? Let's do this one. Get a little darker and just touch there. You know, I'm not hardly even doing anything. I'm going into the darker and I'm just barely applying it's probably kind of good that I'm a lefty because and I hold this at a slant because then you can see how I'm doing this now if you want you can just directly take your marker and just color it in that's all up to you let's see what else I think I am going to color the eyes pink but I'm going to go directly from the marker. Okay, and there, there, this does have two tips, these markers, which are great, especially for scrapbooking and everything. It's wonderful. So I'm moving my paper. Hope I'm still in view. All right, so now I'm gonna switch colors. So when you switch colors, and you're gonna do this on and off, you just get on there and you see, I don't have any color coming off. So I'm going to turn this around and have my green facing. And I'm going to touch into that and I'm going to test here. So I'm going to start with the body. Bring a little color down there, but I want it nice and dark. I might want this to be really dark. Yeah, I think I want that really dark. All right, so I'm gonna come out here 
with some green and you see I'm doing like some brush strokes. And it's always nice to put a little bit of a light coat and then come in and bring in your dark. Always start back where the darkest is so that you don't surprise. Now, once this is clean, you can bring it back and you can bring back some of the, the dark. Sometimes what I'll do is if I have a light amount, the items I want green, seeing how there's hardly anything on here, I will color all the parts I want green. <laughs> then I'll go in and put in all the dark shaded areas. Okay. So now I'm going to get into some dark. I'm going to start here, bring it out. I hope all of you are at least giving this a try and, and understanding that it's going to take a little bit of time unless you're a fine art trained student, then you got this like in the bag and I am not that. So again, I'm bringing the dark in. Then I'm cleaning this off. And I'm going to kind of see about blending a little. All right. Oh, I missed one. Hey, everybody's saying, Sharon, you missed one. Oh, you don't know my name is Sharon. <laughs> okay, so let's bring a little dark in here. And sometimes I'll go back over it because, like I say, they dry lighter than you started with, okay? So sometimes I go back in and go, wow, I want that dark, dark, dark. So I'll just go back in and add some. All right, so if you can let that one go, then I move up here to this next larger one. And I am going to blend these top two with both colors just to show you how you can bring them in. So I'm cleaning off the tip and I am going to start with the green and I am going to just flick a little bit of green and I'm gonna clean off the tip and I'm gonna get some burgundy, but I'm gonna test it, or fuchsia, and I'm gonna come it this way and then they both will blend together. And they both blend together. So maybe you want the green just a little bit darker there. Bring it in to the fuchsia. Okay. So the other ones I am just going to do regular like like we were before, but I just wanted to show you how you can take the two colors and blend them together on the top. We'll probably do that on this little one again so that you'll get to do it again. So I'm going to make sure that I have a clean marker or blender. I'm going to turn this around so that I'm into the fuchsia. And I think I'm going to, these are very tiny, so I'm barely putting any pressure or any color on, and then I'm gonna brush it off and then bring it out, okay? So I'm gonna grab a little bit. You see I'm running down. I'm even going right over the sticker, the silver sticker itself, and that's not a problem. It does not color it at all. So you see how now it's blended dark in the center, lighter as you go out. So let's do this one. Okay. 
Okay, we'll get a little bit darker. Clean it off a little. Oops, I had a lot more on there than I thought. Okay, so we gotta bring a little bit more darkness in there. So until you're happy, I mean, it's all, it's, this is your project. If you're happy with it, then stop whenever. So just remember to clean off your tip. If you have one like this, or if, you know, if you're using, if you're using water, you would probably have a little bit more difficulty. Plus this is cardstock, so I don't recommend water, but you might have a Dove blender, something like that. So, whoops, I got to test. Let's put some color on. Test and make sure. Okay, so let's do the body. Do this, this, this. I'm getting into the lighter. This, this, and this. Okay, so now we're going to add our darkening tones. I'm definitely going to color that deep. Almost like I could take the marker and color it. Then I'm just going to add little bits to the edges, just little bits. Ooh, that one was a little bit much. Let's clean this off and then see if I can drag a little bit of that back. Probably not gonna be able to. Well, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, Perfection is only found in heaven. All right, so we now have finished two of the dragonflies. I hope you're enjoying this particular coloring technique. Now we're going to do the small dragonfly. I'm bringing this in. I'm trying to keep in view. Make sure I'm in view. You see, I haven't even added color to this palette that I'm using. Pretty much still right there on the surface. If you need to, you can reapply, but these are such small openings that you don't need any more. Okay, so let's do the fuchsia on the tips. Okay, let me see. I want to make sure that you're seeing everything I'm doing. See, I'm not going in too, too far because I want the two to blend. And I am going to get a darker part and I'm coloring the center really dark pink, cleaning that off a little bit. Now I'm going to go into the green. And that's okay. So now I'm going to come from this side and meet up with the pink. Or the fuchsia. It does end up looking like pink, but it is a fuchsia color. I mean, you look at this and you look at this, you would never have expected it. So always test your markers. Oops. Boy, it's bad when you're talking and doing. I just stuck that in the fuchsia and I wanted it in the green. But at least I caught myself. Okay. So now maybe I want to come back and darken the tips a little. This is all your personal preference. It isn't one only way. Like I say, I did one where I colored in straight with the markers. I didn't even blend and it still looked nice. So there you have it. Now what you want to do is look it over and if you find that this is too light, here, then you just add a little bit more of that color. If you think it's not dark enough, like I say they dry lighter than, you see how much different it's making, how much difference it's making when I'm doing this. So you may want to do that. I'm barely getting into the openings. So let's go ahead and do it down here too. I'm just kind of like tapping a little bit. 
not hardly moving it at all. Now, let's see if I'm going to mess this up. Clean it off. Put a little blend. There. All that coloring is done. And we barely used the ink with this blender pen. So remember to put the caps back on. That's vitally important. I must have something on mine. Sorry about that, everybody. I have something on here. Probably I did it. So there's your front of your card. Now you're going to take your card base. Your card base. And you'll see one side has a humped up part and one side is dented in. So this is kind of called a valley and this is called a mountain. So my phrase is to go over the mountain. And then if you have a, a bone folder, but if you don't, you can take the edge of scissors and you can crease this, burnish this to where the crease is really nice and flat. Now we're going to assemble this to our card. So I'm going to turn this sideways and it doesn't matter which tape you use. I'll go ahead and use the 3 8 inch tape. So you're going to put it down here. Oops, make sure I'm in the middle. Down here. You're going to bring it all the way along. It has to be one full piece. And then you can either cut this with scissors or just tear it with your finger. As you can see, this end was torn. So now I'm just going what I call around the clock. So now I'm going here and you do not overlap. If you can see that you don't overlap and you don't run off the card front or the card edges. Okay. And we're going around this way. We're not overlapping. You can even have it this far apart. It really doesn't matter. I'm teaching you this technique and I will teach it with every, every class that Stamp On It does. I will be teaching you this. And I would love it if everyone would at least give this a try. I've had so many rave reviews on this technique of putting your card together. All right, so you wanna burnish down all your tape. Now, what you're going to do is you're gonna pick a corner, doesn't matter which corner you pick, and you're going to Pull back just a little bit, you know, inch. And if you want, you can even fold it over that way, okay? You see it's at an angle. Then you go right beside that one and you do the same thing. You fold it back and you pinch, okay? These end up looking like flags. Now you're gonna go to the opposite corner. The opposite corner and you're going to do the same thing. So now you see that we only have two corners exposed. Okay? I am just gonna lay that, flop it right on my card. And look, it doesn't stick. This tape acts like, these little flags act like little feet that keep it raised up where the glue is, the tape is exposed. So you do not want to touch these two corners until you feel you have everything positioned correctly. So you can set it down or hold it in your hand. It's all up to you. You just kind of look around and see if it looks pretty good. Then without moving these fingers that is holding it in place, Bring another one down and press. And then you can move one of them once you've got this one down. 
then what you do is you just pull your strip. Pull that strip. Lay it down. And pull that strip. And there, your card is assembled. Now, something that you might want to do, and I want to show you here, is you might want to put a little 1 8 inch strip on the inside and put some glitter on that. Maybe we'll do that right, right here. So I'm going to bring back my Heather, I think, because that's what I put in the center. And I'm going to bring back my 1 8 inch double stick tape roll and one coffee filter. So let's first put the tape down. So I have it opened up. I'm taking the tape and again, I'm going to grab more than I need. As a matter of fact, there's something on this one. I've got to tear off a piece back here farther. So I have something on the edge. And that's because I use this tape all over the place. Okay, so again, you see I'm holding my fingers and I'm holding it down and you can decide how far in you want to go. Tear that off. And then we're going to cut off the excess again. Oops, that's not what I want that to do. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to burnish this down. Then I'm going to take my Heather and my spoon. I'm going to pour a little bit back in there. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm working, I can lose something so easily on my table. Okay, so we have the Heather. I'm trying to get all of this in view. Let's put the Heather right up on here, I think. Okay, I think you can see that. I'm going to bend this back a little bit so it's not causing a problem. All right, so now what I'm going to do is remove the backing. You can use your fingernail or a pokey tool. And I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take the spoon. And I am going to pick this up because I want to be over the coffee filter. You want to do this over the coffee filter. And then I'm just pouring the glitter on and letting it run down. Pick up some more. Turn this around. Just shake that on down. Like I said, it doesn't take much. Then you're going to take your anti-static brush. You're going to clean your spoon. You're going to brush this and you can brush it in here because this has only one color on here. So you can brush this right back into this coffee filter because there is no chance of contamination. Okay. Now we want to, like I say, bring this to life and burnish and embed the glitter into the tape. So we're going to rub. It's from the heat of our fingers and the rubbing that just brings it all to life. I think you can see the difference between this side and this side. And again, brush it again. So now there's something fun and interesting for the person to, that's receiving this card. On the inside, they also have something pretty. Okay? All right, so let's put this glitter back in its pouch again, back in its little bag. I want to show you, and now you have your envelope, so when you're ready to mail it, you can use the envelope and address it and send it off. 
but I hope that you enjoyed this. I want to show you one where I didn't blend at all. Let's see if I can bring these right by each other. This is the blended. You can see all the colors in there, all of them. I don't know how well, but I'm hoping you can see all the colors and, and see it on your own project. But here's where I only use the Heather and the Mermaid. And so I did the Heather and then I peeled this off and did Mermaid. So if you don't like this blended look, you can just do plain. And every time you blend, it will not look the same. Every blended piece will not look the same because here's now three blended pieces. They don't look alike. This one ends up with a lot more green in it. And, and you know, you just, you can't control what's going to happen. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this class and we'll think about taking more in the future. So we sure enjoy having you with us and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Debbie from Stamp On It, and you have just finished doing one of our projects. Um, you did the thank you vertical card, the slimline card with the glitter border, working with our adhesive and applying glitter to it to create beautiful borders. Um, this is the card, it will look something like this if you did it like this, and creating a border even on the inside if you want to. It was using our adhesive on a roll. We have it in several different widths on the website. This adhesive is a really good high-end adhesive. It sticks to glass, plastic, metal, um, even fabric. It can be used in, in unique ways that way. Hi everybody. Debbie from Stamp On It. And this is just a quick follow-up video to the project you just worked on with us. If your project, um, if you made it through the project, it'll look something like this, various versions. And you worked with our adhesive. And that's one of the things I want to talk about today and just on this quick video follow-up is working with our adhesives. It comes on rolls in widths on our website, but we also sell it on a sheet. Um, in a sheet format, this is already cut down and I apologize. It's more like this size when you purchase it on our website. It comes in packs of five sheets. But I, oddly enough, was waiting for our shipment to arrive and we haven't gotten the full sheets in. So I'm just going to use a uh, partial cut piece of it. On one side of our adhesive sheet is cardstock with a graph. So you can graph line. So you can use it, cut it straight. Um, work it that way. On the other side is a carrier paper. And today I am going to show you how to create a beautiful background. And this one already has our uh, art acetate layered over it, but we're going to create the background in here back behind this acetate using embossing powders, gold leafing, glitters. Um, we have a full line of the PK Glitz glitters on our website. And we have glitters and embossing powders that coordinate. So for example, this is squash blossom embossing powder. We also have it in three different finishes of embossing powder, but we also carry it in a glitter format. So you can get a coordinating or matching color in glitter on our site. And our glitters come in different finishes as well. Today we are working with embossing powder squash blossom tapestry finish, embossing powder tapestry finish, eggplant. We are working with our gold leaf silver and silver ultra fine glitter glitz. All right. So without further ado, let's move forward. So first of all, we're going to care 
remove the carrier paper. Now, for some of you, this might be the most challenging part of the project. The carrier paper is thinner than the cardstock on the back. So what I'm going to do is choose to pull the carrier sheet off so that my layer is a little bit more rigid than I'm working with. All right. Now here's where you may want to work with just a little tool to hold your layer if you want in case it sticks to your fingers. Save the carrier paper. All right. I'm going to move fairly quickly through this because I don't want to waste time and not show you the whole project. I forgot I want to put down a piece of cardstock, just scrap paper, cardstock, whatever, to catch my um, pieces, my, my trash that falls around it. And that way I can just clean my surface. You can save that, but in essence of time, I'm just going to clean the surface and dump it into my garbage next to me here. So first of all, we're going to work with the first one will be a little bit of leafing. So I'm going to take my leafing and one of the things you don't want to do is breathe heavily when you're working with leafing and you can just tear it apart and let it fall randomly to the surface, big pieces, little pieces, because we're just creating a uh, background with no particular pattern for this one. All right. And it's going to stick a little bit to your fingers depending on how much leafing. And once you do this technique once, you'll get a gist of it. And then in the future, you'll say, okay, I want less leafing or more leafing, that type of thing. And I forgot to grab my tweezer, but you can, if you get too much in an area to a, to a point until you burnish it down, you can pick it up, move it around. All right. But we're just going to go with about that much. We'll just break up a couple more pieces here. Like I said, once you do this project once, you'll get a really good idea of how you want it to look and how much of each product to put down. All right. Now we're going to take our carrier paper and just lay it on there and just press down. And that will adhere that leafing to the surface so it is now stuck. Okay. All right. Set our leafing aside. Now we're going to work with our first color. And I think I'm going to start with a little bit of the eggplant. This is embossing powder. We are not going to heat it. We are using it just as a texture and a finish. So we're going to do the tap tap technique that we were taught by Janelle from PK Glitz. Some of you may remember if you've been going to shows a lot. We purchased their company, PK Glitz, from them quite a few years ago when they retired. So what she taught was to put your embossing powder, your powders, on your tip of your mini spoon. And by the way, all the products I'm using we do have on our website, so if you're looking for it, go to our website. The embossing powder on the tip of your spoon. Bring it up quite high and tap, and don't put a lot of powder on your spoon. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. Less is better because you have better control over it. By keeping my spoon up higher, it's going to spread it out very evenly, um, kind of just salt and pepper shaker it down to the surface. Tap very lightly. Move your spoon around. If you want to target a certain area with a little bit more color, bring your spoon down a little lower. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. All right. Once you've put that color on and you like kind of what you're seeing, we're going to go to our next color. And next one is the squash blossom. Again, tapestry finish. This is kind of more of a natural finish. Uh, one of the, the finishes of our embossing powder has glitter in it so it's really cool it sparkles too again keep your spoon up tap 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 i love this squash blossom so i'm going to add a little bit more of this to my finish and you can go back and add more of the other ones if you want to don't overdo with any one color to start with because once you put down one of the colors or one of the items whether it's leafing or powder uh, glitter you can't go back and put something else there because the adhesive is now gone, used up. So keep that in mind as you are applying your colors. I love this blue. It's kind of a turquoise actually. Bringing it down a little bit just to target some areas that I need a little more color on. Pick up a little bit more on my spoon. You notice I'm only getting some on the tip of the spoon. It gives you a lot more control that way. And again, just keep tapping until you like what you see. All right. Now, if you want to save the color in between, once you apply a color, 
pick your piece up and tap it off into a container or whatever to save that color. Because like now I have both of these in here, so I, I have a mix, which I can still uh, keep. We call that a sludge pot, where we just keep all of our leftovers in a pot and we create beautiful backgrounds of the same technique um, with the sludge, and that's really cool too. But I'm not going to be saving this because um, in essence of time, we're going to move on to our glitter. This is going to add a little silver sparkle to our finish. And again, tap off the extra in your container before you go to your surface. And I'm not going to do a lot of glitter just because of the finish that I want to uh, get. I want to get more of a natural than a shimmery finish, but I do want a little sparkle. Got to have a little sparkle in your life. So tap, tap, tap. All right. Now we're going to go back, and I'm just going to add a little more eggplant. And your goal is to completely cover your layer. Now, one of the things you can do if you want some areas to be just more of a natural white or whatever color your background is, you can just use a clear embossing powder, too. And um, don't heat it again, just use it as a finish texture. And we're going to put a little more of this on. And again, we're getting closer to the end of it not being sticky anymore because everything is covered. Now we're going to take and use this as a burnishing paper. We're going to burnish over the complete layer. And the goal is to not have any sticky showing when you are done. So if you still have some sticky, you want to go back and apply more color. Okay. Just burnish, burnish, burnish all over. What this is doing is pressing to the adhesive surface all of the powders that I have on here so that there is no area sticky. And they're not going to fall off. With our adhesive, once you burnish this down, this is not coming off. This is not going to be peeling off. And our adhesive sticks to glass, plastic, candles, uh, wax surfaces, unusual surfaces, metal, things like that. So you can do a lot of interesting projects with our adhesive. All right, we also have an adhesive on our website called Wonder Film, which is in the PK Glitz line also. And that is a really high-end adhesive, and it also sticks to fabric and is light washable. I hand wash if I use it. I want to apply something, I die cut it, put, um, put it to the surface of the fabric, burnish it down, peel off the carrier, put your glitters or embossing powders on, and then you want to um, hand wash pretty much. But it's really cool. All right, so we burnish this down. We're going to take this piece now, and we're going to clean it off with our anti-static brush. Sharon was using that as well. And if you feel anything that's sticky, make sure you go back and apply some more glitter or you know whatever color you want to see more of or uh, leafing. If you got any on the back side, you can clean it up with it. This brush is fantastic. It removes all the little residue that's left, cleans it up, makes it look absolutely stunning. All right, so once you have that done, and you can take this and tap it off in your garbage off to the side just to clean off anything that might stick. Now is when I take this sheet away and I can tap it into my sludge pot or my trash so that when I bring it back, I have a, oops, be careful you don't make waves around your uh, leafing. When you take the lid off from this or take it out of the baggie, make sure you're not breathing or got a fan on because <laughs> it'll blow away. Oh, it's a wonderful product, but it does have a mind of its own sometimes. All right, so now we have created this absolutely stunning background. Check it out with all the different textures. We have the leafing. We have the powders, embossing powders. We have a little bit of shimmer with the glitter. Is that not stunning? That is absolutely gorgeous. Now, we could use it as is, we could die cut it, whatever we wanted to do with it, because once you peel this off, it becomes a adhesive back again, or you can use it as is, layer it down. That's what we do a lot of times because we have a line of art acetate. And here's, I'm just gonna show you three different sheets. Just, this was randomly picked. We have hundreds of them on our website. 
I'm going to work show you some samples made with our wild animals. And these are great for kids cards, guy cards, um, masculine, really, really cool. Um, that's wild animals one and two. The actual one that I am going to cut, I cut up and I'm going to show you with this particular background is our lighthouse. One of my favorites. Okay, this is a full sheet how it comes. Two sheets in a package. You can cut this with a scissor. You can cut it with a trimmer. Very easily cut. No big deal. You don't need to have a high school even education. Now, once I've cut it, this is the lighthouse. All right, it looks like this. What I'm going to do is layer it onto my background like that. How stunning is that? Absolutely gorgeous. If I can pick that up and show you, I'll just roll it a little bit so you can see it from different angles. And like I said, now is when you look at it and you go, okay, I put too much of the blue, I put too much of the purple, or I want to put more of a color here. You can actually, when you're creating this, look at your image, lay it side by side and say, okay, I want to add more of one color here. Bring your spoon down lower and tap, tap, tap in that area. And you will actually create, for example, if you wanted to create this area in a different color, you could do that. Now remember, it's not going to be to the line, but it is a background, but it will give that shadow of the color that you want there. So, okay, that is working with our adhesive, double-sided adhesive on the sheet, by the sheet, cut it up to the size you want to work with, creating backgrounds, creating texture, creating um, not necessarily an embossed, heated embossed finish, but creating gorgeous backgrounds with products that you would, you know, normally you use embossing powder to heat it. And in this case, if you could feel this, it is so yummy. It's just a great background. All right, I'm going to quickly show you some samples and then we got to sign off. This is some of our wild animals cut up. All right, and here is the lighthouse finished. And here is the same lighthouse, and only you can see they used more of the eggplant. Okay, just a different look using the same products. All right, here is the lion off the wild animals, and that is just using embossing powder and a little bit of glitter in the background. This one is again off the wild animals. And let's see if I can grab this one just to show you very quickly before our time is up here and the elephant. Just creating backgrounds using products you may already have, but like I said, we have hundreds of colors on our website. Um, these samples will be on our website. You'll be able to click on the color and see them. Check it out. We'd love to have you be creative. Get creative and create some backgrounds and put some acetates over top. All right, so just want to thank you for joining us in our project, but also with our little demo here. And if you go to our website at www.stamponit.net, you can sign up for our email. We do have videos on our website. We have um, emailings going out. Not a lot. We do not inundate you with junk email. We really try not to do that. We will send out notices of sales, new techniques, ideas, uh, we're just things like that. So sign up and enjoy it. We also have a uh, Facebook page. You can click on that off our website also and a blog. So we'd love to have you join us. And also, oh, before I sign out, don't forget to use the coupon code MMTESLIM15. I'm sure they're going to flash it up on the screen when I'm done here. So enjoy, ladies. We'd love to have you check out our website. Thank you. Signing off from Stamp On It.